Hello everyone. My name is Kostav Dikshit and I am here today to talk about hydrocracking process. Now this presentation covers the subtopic of the hydrocarbon engineering course taught by Dr. Shashikant Yadav who is an assistant professor at Department of Chemical Engineering NIT Jalandhar. Now without any further ado, let's get started. So before everything else, let's first look upon what we are going to do in this whole presentation. First of all, we'll answer the question that what is hydrocracking process? Then we'll come towards the hydrocracking chemistry. Then we'll look upon the hydrocracking feed. Then we'll be looking at the gas oil hydrocracking feed and product analysis. Then we'll go towards the hydrocracking catalyst. Then we'll talk about the single stage hydrocracking unit. And in the end, we'll talk about the overview of some technologies related to hydrocracking. So like I said, Firstly, we will be answering the question that what is the hydrocracking process? Firstly, let's look at the right side of the presentation. You can see an image. Now, this is what a typical hydro processing unit looks like. And this one is based out of Italy. Hydrocracking is a catalytic hydrogenation process in which high molecular weight feedstocks are converted and hydrogenated to a lower molecular weight product. The catalyst used in hydrocracking is a bifunctional one. It is composed of a metallic part which promotes hydrogenation and an acid part which promotes cracking. Hydrogenation removes impurities in the feed such as sulfur, nitrogen and metals. Cracking will break bonds and the resulting unsaturated products are in consequence hydrogenated into stable products. Hydrocracking is a very severe form of hydroprocessing. It breaks carbon-carbon bonds and it brings about a drastic reduction in molecular weight. It reduces the average molecular weight and produces higher yields of fuel products. It has more than 50% conversion and products are more appropriate for diesel than gasoline. On the right side of the presentation, you can see a picture which clearly shows that greater is the boiling point in conversion and the greater is the volume expansion we need, we'll need hydrocracking either full or mild. Here in this slide, I have attached a full process flow sheet of a refining industry and the hydro cracking and hydro treating units are in red. So look at the lines and look at where they are going. Now hydro cracking plays an important role as one of the main conversion processes in the, in the refinery. It is mainly used to produce metal distillates of low sulfur content such as kerosene and diesel. If mild hydrocracking is used, a LFSO can be produced. More recently, it has been used to remove wax by catalytic dewaxing and for aromatic removal by hydrogen saturation. This has been applied to the lube oil plants and is gradually replacing the old solvent dewaxing and aromatic solvent extraction. After the discussion from previous slides, now we know what is hydrocracking. Let's look at hydrocracking chemistry to know what is exactly going on at the molecular level. Firstly, the cracking reactions. Saturated paraffins are cracked to form lower molecular weight olefins and paraffins. Side chain cracks off small ring aromatics and naphthene. Side chain also cracks off resins and asphaltenes, leaving thermally stable polynuclear aromatics. But Dehydrogenation also occurs if not limited by hydrogenation. Now let's look at alkane hydrocracking first. Now a very big alkane which is R CH2 bond CH2 R prime when added with hydrogen breaks off. Then hydroalkylation occurs in which an aromatic hydrocarbon with addition of hydrogen gives off a thermally stable, a very stable aromatic hydrocarbon and RCH3 goes off alone. Then the ring opening happens when this further hydrogenated, then it opens the ring. In the previous slide, in step number two and three, we saw hydrogenation reactions. Let's get to know a little more about them. They are exothermic, they give off heat. Now hydrogenation inserted to saturate newly formed molecule from aromatic cracking. Olefins are saturated to form light hydrocarbon, especially butane, and aromatic rings hydrogenated to cycloparaffines. 
Now let's come to the isomerization reaction, the example of which is given in point number four. Now isomerization provides branching of alkyl groups of paraffins and opening of naphthenic rings. Now finally the condensation reaction, they are suppressed by hydrogen. After the previous discussions, now we know that what is hydrocracking process and we even know that what is happening at the molecular level in a hydrocracking process on human. Now let's talk about the hydrocracking feed. Now what the typical feeds look like from a catalytic cracker it's a cycloid it's highly aromatic with sulfur a small ring and polynuclear aromatics it contains catalyst fines and it usually has a very high viscosity hydro cracked to form high yields of jet fuel kerosene diesel and heating oil next one is gas oil waste breaker it's just aromatic it doesn't contain any sulfur and it's not olefinic now the gas oil from the delayed coker is aromatic, is olefinic and contains sulfur. On the right side of the presentation, you can see some feedstocks and some products. Like for example, if you have feedstock of kerosene, you will get product as naphtha. If you have feedstock of vacuum gas oil, the products are naphtha, jet fuel, diesel and lube oil. If we have FCC LCO as feedstock, we'll get only naphtha. But if we have FCC HCO or coker LCO or coker HCO, we get naphtha and distillates. In case of desulfated oil, we get olipin plant feedstocks. Now we know that what are the typical feedstocks and what are the typical products in a hydrocracking process. Let's look at one of them in more detail, the gas oil hydrocracking feed and the respective product analysis. First of all, the feed. Hydrocracking does a better job processing aromatic rings without coking than catalytic cracking. Hydrogen used to hydrogenate polynuclear aromatics. It reduces the frequency of aromatic condensation. Hydrocracking is not as attractive as delayed coking for residues high in resins and heteroatom compounds. Heteroatoms and metals prevalent in resins and asphaltenes poison the hydroprocessing catalyst. High concentration of resins and asphaltenes will still ultimately coke. The feeds are limited to a Connardson number of 8% weight and feeds require high pressure and large amount of hydrogen. We have analyzed the gas oil hydrocracker feed. Now let's analyze the gas oil hydrocracker products. So hydrocracking is primarily to make distillates. It is normally used as a specialized operation used to optimize catalytic cracker operation. Catalytic cracking is preferred to make gasoline from heavier fractions. Now, hydro cracking capacity is only about 8% of the crude distillation capacity. And to note that all refineries does not have hydro crackers. The intent is to minimize the production of heavy fuel oil and light ends are approximately 5% of the feed. The major point of the product is that all liquid fractions are low in sulfur and olefins, which is a very good point. After the discussion about feed, we have the catalyst, the hydro cracking unit catalyst. Well, you might have seen me coining this term catalyst once or twice earlier as well. And you might have been thinking that is there something special about the catalyst? Is there something unique? Is there something that we should learn? Then yes, there is something. If you remember in the first section when we were addressing the question that what is the hydro cracking process? I told you that the hydro cracking catalyst is a bifunctional one. It has two functions. Firstly, the cracking function and secondly, the hydrogenation function. The cracking function is through the acidic supports and the hydrogenation functions is via metals. The acidic support can be one, amorphous oxides, for example, silica alumina, or two, a crystalline zeolite, mostly modified by zeolite plus binder, example, alumina, or three, a mixture of crystalline zeolite and amorphous oxides. Cracking and isomerization reactions take place on the acidic support. The metals providing the hydrogenation dehydrogenation function can be noble metals palladium, platinum or non-noble metal sulfides 
from group 6A molybdenum tungsten and group 8A cobalt nickel. These metals catalyze the hydrogenation of the feedstock making it more reactive for cracking and heteroatom removal also reducing the coking rate. Now in the bottom right corner of the presentation you can see hydrogenation function and cracking function written along with X, double X, triple X and four times X just below some of the catalyst. Now X represents the order of strength. So the most aggressive catalyst for hydro cracking unit will be PD, PTPD, the platinum palladium catalyst and zeolite. After all our previous discussion on hydro cracking unit, we know all the theoretical components of an hydro cracking unit. Let's move on towards the single stage hydro cracking unit. Uh, this flow sheet which you are seeing is from Halda Topso. And uh, let me uh, brief upon some important points about the single stage hydro cracking unit. First of all, the feedstock is hydro treated to remove sulfur, nitrogen and oxygen components. It guards reactors to remove metals. The temperature ranges between 660 to 800 degree Fahrenheit. It may raise temperature 0.1 to 0.2 degree Fahrenheit per day to offset loss of catalyst activity. Third point, the pressure is ranging between 1200 to 2000 PSIG. Now raising pressure increases conversion. So if you want more conversion, then keep the pressure towards 2000. Fourth and very important point about the single stage hydro cracking unit is that high hydrogen recycle is there which minimizes coking. Now in case of low pressure, mild severity, the recycle is about 1000 to 2000 SCF per BBL. Uh, but in case of high pressure and high severity which produces high conversion, the recycle rate is about 2000 to 3000 SCF per BBL. Now let's look at uh, the process flow sheet. The fresh feed is coming. It goes towards the furnace, then the pre-treating reactor and there it is our hydro cracking reactor. After that, it goes to a separator. Then the recycled stream comes back and mixes with the feed and the pro process goes on and we get naphtha, metal distillate and process gas. So here we are at the end of this presentation. We now know all about the hydro cracking unit. We have seen the single stage hydro cracking unit as well and some of its pointers. Now let's talk about the hydro cracking technologies overview. Their providers and the features of the hydro cracking they are providing. First of all, accents. They provide hydro cracking unit and rested hydro cracking. Chevron Nimbus Global LLC provides hydro cracking which is essentially iso cracking and rested hydro cracking. DuPont, Haldotopso, Shell and UOP provides only hydro cracking. But ExxonMobil in addition to hydro cracking, they also provide moderate pressure hydro cracking. Thank you very much for listening me and I hope that you have gotten a lot of knowledge from this presentation. Thank you again.